actually before we start recording can i show you something um that kind of shows us like the beginning of our friendship oh gosh yeah we're already recording but i mean go for it <laughs> okay oh oopsies listen listen i so when i was like preparing for season two and i was like trying to get my room together so i had a space to record mm -hmm. um i found all of these old pictures and who may <gasps> those people be <laughs> true infants oh my god speaking of infants like a perfect that i like am freshly <laughs> shaved today and then you saw you're bringing this to the like the let me just zoom on your like look at baby samuel oh my gosh like there's baby gabby child dude children. my eyes are not even in this picture oh my gosh i you know they do that for us <laughs> You're listening to Enhance, the podcast dedicated to highlighting real stories told by real people. Hello, Enhance listeners. Thank you so much for tuning back into another episode of Enhance. I don't even know what episode this will be. Um, episode five, Gabby's holding up five fingers. I think um, it's five, yes. You know what? Let's say it's five. five, and if it's not, Jinx. Wait, Jinx? What's it? <laughs> I have no idea. What's the, what's the one where it's like, you're, you pulled a joke on something? Not boom, burn. You know, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> Jinx. Jinx again. Our mental synchronization. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm done. I'm just like you. You're, You're just, just like, like me. me. Yeah, the Barbie <laughs> movie's out already by the time this comes out. <gasps> okay. Thanks. I, I do want to say that. I'm actually really jealous of my mobile friend. Shout out if you're listening to this. They know who they are. But uh, they're all dressing up as, like, different Barbies. And like That's going so to the Barbie movie. I'm I'm so upset I'm not there, but it's okay. Illy forever. I will like the pictures. Slay me, Queen Slay. Any yeah. whore. Um, um, do not disturb. I do have an icebreaker for today. <sighs> Please give me the icebreaker. But Break my bum. ice. Okay, here it is. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite childhood Halloween costume? What was my favorite Shrek quote? No, you already messed that one up. Sydney agrees with me that you messed Does that she? one up. Does she? Oh, God. Did you guys record that during your weird Wednesday? Did you talk shit about me? Heck yeah, we did. Good, good. I'm excited. I'm so and excited. you will hear um, that this coming month, actually, yeah. when this comes out. Um, so. Is it this? No, no, no. Mine and yours is the weird Wednesday that comes out this month. And, oh, you're talking about when this episode comes out. Gotcha. Okay, just kidding. Um, I just Got recorded it. with Vanessa, um, and she, I think she, her episode comes out before this one. If not, you'll get to meet her or you'll get to see her. And, um, but, uh, right after we recorded just a few days later, she, um, posted on TikTok and she laughs at memes. I've sent you herself several times. I'm sure she's freaking hilarious, but, um, she posted a bunch of memes and they like, sometimes her memes have like a, um, theme to them. Okay. And this time it was like Shrek themed. Some of them were. And I literally <laughs> commented and I was like, you're going to unfriend me when you hear one of the uh, episodes that's like about to come out. I and literally, when you said that, I literally said, I'm getting up right now. I have to hang up. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're like, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done with this we're conversation. Done. <laughs> we're, we're done, done with the podcast. We're done with the company. We're done with everything. <laughs> breakup. Big breakup. Oh my God. Selling right. the company for a hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Could be fun. Anyways. <laughs> Anywho, um, what was my favorite Halloween costume when I was growing up? So, um, I don't know. I think we talked about this in the horror hump day last year on last season. Did we really? I cannot remember. No, 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 no. What I'm about to say is like, I think oh. we record, uh, we talked about it. Yeah. So, you know how I am ADHD. I flip the importance and structure of sentences. It, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, <laughs> You did, oh, they aren't going to get to see you do it. So uh, let me reenact what Gabby just did. But instead of with a bottle with a can, she went and knocked the little cap off. Anyway, that's why I went to that. But um, so snap, snap. snap crackle pop. Um, but yeah, I think we talked about this some um, on the horror hump day last year and for last season. Um, but my family, we didn't, were not allowed to like uh, celebrate Halloween whenever I was growing up. 
Yeah. Why and do so, I keep doing this to you? This is oh, no, 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 no. It's okay because I do have a, a costume that I liked a lot. Um, because like there was this one time, just a fun backstory, just because that's who I am. Um, I one time when I, at my the only time that I was allowed to celebrate Halloween, I remember it being a big discussion in my house. And Gabby, what are you doing? I wanted to put the cat back on the Gatorade. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, um, hey, can you do me a favor and say something and stand up and show the viewers your chair? I want to see something real quick. And this is my gamer chair. Oh my god. Okay, never mind. When it, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what it is. Never mind. Oh my gosh. I just made such a big deal out of nothing. Y'all ignore me. Today's been a hard day, the day that I'm recording. So um I, it looked like your chair was like not processing through the camera correctly and was like wavy and wiggly. And I was like, hold up, but it was just the lights coming through your blinds. I but was anyway. like, I'll stand up. What is yeah. that? Like? um but yeah so in my house like we were not really allowed to celebrate halloween but i remember the first time that i ever dressed up in a costume um it was for a church event and um i remember it being a big discussion in my household because my mom and dad were like well the church is doing halloween so can we allow him to celebrate halloween and so i dressed up they finally get like said sure and they took toilet paper and wrapped me in it and i was a mummy well we got to church Aww. and we realized all the costumes were supposed to be Jesus themed and like oh. church themed, but oh. it's okay. Cause you know what I did? I was just like, y'all I'm Lazarus. Smart man. Smart. Man. <laughs> you covered your butt. Very yeah. Nicely. And I was like, I mean, I was very little and I don't think I was clever enough to come up with it. I think my dad was the one who did. Cause I was like, y'all it's supposed to be church themed. And he was like, you're just Lazar Lazarus. And I was like, Okay, cool. That's who I am. Smart. So, oh, yeah. I kind of love that. Right? But my favorite Halloween costume growing up, um, just because it's not as impressive as coming up with Lazarus as a child. But anyways, um, was uh, I had a homemade... Um, uh, I did all of my own, like, once I got, became a teenager, I made all of my own costumes, and I still, to this day, like, still kind of make all my costumes. But um, I had a... Uh, homemade pirate costume that was like my go-to yeah and i took like old ropes that were like different colors and stuff like that and i would like make them really really like uh tattered and torn and i'd like braid them into my hair and i'd take just hair clips and then put like a bandana on my head and like i just yeah i had some old pants that were like scuffed up really bad and some old boots and an old like blazer that was really scuffed up and i, I put it Boots together the house yeah. down mm-hmm yeah, what about you? What was your favorite um, Halloween costume when you were growing up? LOL. Mine is not exciting as your stories. <gasps> um, <laughs> mine was like this big, it was like, I don't even know if what was like exact title of it, but I just remember my mom getting me this massive like queen, like English queen like dress. Yeah. And it was white and gold and it was beaded and it was beautiful and I felt regal and slay the house down yes i yeah. hear that like four times like it was absolutely amazing. why wouldn't you um, you know yeah. i'm so sorry no you go you go oh. brother okay so um this year or no this past year if we wouldn't have gotten rained out uh, my friend Haley and i were supposed to be going as the may queen and the bear from um midsummer and i made my oh. own like may queen headset and everything like i looked phenomenal oh, and sure. if i have a picture i'll post it either somewhere here or we'll put it on our on the enhanced instagram but um yeah it was i mean i like went all out like i went thrifting bought a bunch of flowers did some sewing did hot glue like took me hours and then i got rained out but yeah if i had to yeah. say the my favorite Halloween costume I ever made. It was not mine. It was um, one of my uh, friends from college. She wanted to be Poison Ivy and mm. she wanted to buy everything but not make it. And I sat there for hours, like hand leafing her corset. Was this and before like, I graduated? I think I remember this. Yeah, this was my yeah. freshman year. Yeah, and it was because yeah. it was funny because she went as Poison Ivy. I went as Catwoman. My yeah. other friend went as Harley. And then our other friend went as Joker, but like a woman Joker. Ah, I love and it. And we yeah. looked sick. Like we looked really good. But I just remember like sitting on her floor. I even made her little hand lit things. Mm -hmm. And just, just hot glue leaf, hot glue, little leaf, hot glue, big leaf. And I was like. I was like, I did that. 
And that was like what I was so proud of. I don't know why, but I was. It was very pretty. Word. Turned out great. Yeah. I remember that. It was Look, amazing. the best like costuming you will ever see in your entire life are um uh college uh sorority and fraternity parties, hands down. Like theme parties. Best they're just costuming. they're just so like random and offhand. And you're just like, what happened there? Yeah. <laughs> How did remember... we get from point A to point B? Yeah. Do you remember whenever I went as a Spring Hill mom to one of the Sigma Kappa parties? Heck yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. And I had the um, fanny pack and I snuck my vodka in and uh, kids do not try this. Um, I snuck my vodka in and an empty sunscreen bottle and I would just be like, mm -hmm. sunscreen. And then, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> just Shabby. wide open, just ready. Just <laughs> <laughs> love that. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess now is a better, a good time than never to, uh, or than ever to introduce our topic today. And today we're going to be talking about empathy and not necessarily Ooh. like, yeah, Gabby and I love empathy, but not necessarily like, um, like you always hear people, spiritual people be like, I'm an empath and blah, 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 blah. Um, I want to get down like, and talk about like, what is empathy? When, like, are you born with it? Is it something you can learn? Is it a natural human concept or is it something you got to come up with? And are people who claim to be em empaths like really empaths? Um, Gabby, put you on the spot because you're an empath. I'm an empath too. But like, I mean, I, when I say empath, like, I'm you, we'll talk about it. But Gabby, you're you're a pretty big empath. I cry all the time. Just <laughs> kidding. That's Just what kidding. being an empath is. But it, no. emotional. <laughs> I mean, a very good. I'm just kidding. Let me let me say this. If you've been called emotional all of your life or that you At get me. stuck in the middle of things, you're an At empath. Me. And let me tell you why. Okay. It's like this weird thing that happens when you you good? Yeah, sorry. I yeah. Um I'm so sorry. That was so distracting. I'll rein it in. I yeah. Um, I thought you like busted something. I was like, where no, is he? No, no, no. I um so a little while back I was rearranging my room because I've told y'all we're doing like house renovations and rearranging sure. stuff, and I'm literally about to be re like moving rooms soon too. But um just because like that one's about to be like at a place where we're gonna be done renovating it, so I have to move out of this one to let this one be renovated and it's a whole thing. But um when I was rearranging things and like setting up a new bed frame I had bought. Um, the bed frame got caught on my wax melter, and the wax melter was up on my desk and went boosh and like Ooh. went boosh Ooh. everywhere. And it's like still just like wax res residue. I just keep finding it everywhere, and it's like on my laptop still some. And I'm just like, how do you even take the lighter how to the laptop? Like, in? yeah, like, or how do you get? How do you clean it? Like, take the lighter to the laptop, put a wet wipe on the laptop. I don't know, you know. So, anyways, but yeah, so. Please continue. Well, part two, the remix on the way. Um, okay. So yeah, no, if you've been called emotional your whole life, or you've always been said that you've been like always in the middle of certain types of drama or topics, you're probably an empath. And let me tell you why. So because you can feel and read people really well. And it, it, and I say it both because you can feel that someone else is feeling something, but when you actually understand and can un, like read it as you're feeling the emotions, it kind of gathers into you and it becomes not your feelings. It becomes their feelings that you're feeling, but then you're crying. So it looks like your feelings, but it's not. Yeah. Or and like you're feeling a certain type of way. Definitely. And then, and then on a more like simple way of putting it empathy is just like whenever you are able to feel something for someone else even if it's something that you're not experiencing firsthand so like just the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and honestly being completely real like in our society people are lacking true empathy and i don't know about you gabby but there have been several points where i've met someone and like being like as someone who i feel like i'm an empath like i really feel other people's emotions i feel for them i put myself in other people's shoes very naturally it's just something i do but i there for a while in my life when people and don't worry it was after i met you so you were not one of these <laughs> people but um there for a little while like especially like after i graduated college i would meet people that were like yeah i'm an empath yeah i'm an empath and that like it was a red flag to me because it was yeah. like them saying that they're an empath they're actually just a narcissist 
and they think mm-hmm. that what they're feeling is everyone else's feelings, but it's really just their own. And yeah, like oh, Gabby, <laughs> oh, bum bum bum, <laughs> <laughs> like literally, like here's my thing. Like if you're just gonna, if you really don't understand what's going on, and you're trying to mask that you understand what's going on, you 100% don't know what's going on. Yeah, well, and like, even like, I'm thinking of one person in particular, and I'm not gonna like give any information as to how I know this person or anything like that. But there's someone that it's a like, literally, I remember from day one, when they were like, yeah, I'm just such an empath. I was like, are you, are you, you know, and I was like, surely she's not like, you know, like, I just literally like, and I didn't want to judge her because we did start off as friends. And we ended up being put in a situation where we had to even be closer friends. And mm-hmm. um, I ended up getting tired of the BS and like pulled some, some kind of boss ass shit one time. And I had to still put yeah. up with her for the whole time I was around her. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about or whatever. But um, she literally like from day one was like, I'm an, em- I'm an empath, I'm an empath, I'm an em- empath. But I was like, you don't act like an empath. Like you literally have no reference or like no um, consideration for other people's feelings whatsoever. Everything is only like what you're experiencing and you're never like putting yourself in someone else's shoes or trying to see things from someone else's perspective. And that's like the key components of being an empath. Everything was just about her. So like, why do you, why? Like, cause I've always wondered like, what is it with these people that are like, actually showing narcissistic tendencies claiming to be empaths like what is that about what is your opinion on that well i think it's just that narcissist when they try to win people over they tend to gravitate towards attributes that normally would get people's attention so an empath for example is someone that's very understanding kind of like you said puts you know themselves in other people's shoes all that good stuff and a narcissist is like that's how i get people to like me and then they just use that not mm. knowing the full extent of it and i'm sure it's not just narcissists i'm sure there's a, like random other people that use it as well but i think it's just a ploy to win people over yeah and i will say that i do want to like clarify i have no backing or um licensing to say whether or not somebody is narcissistic or showing narcissistic tendencies this is just like from experience seeing it over and over again but i remember one time it was while i was dealing with this specific person that i'm thinking of that i saw something someone posted of all places i think it was on facebook and it was someone that was talking about like the caption was like we all know that one girl and then the actual picture was um you're not an like or like stop blaming your bad behavior on empathy you're non empath you're just a narcissist and i was like <laughs> oh my god like it literally described it so perfectly and literally this person it was like a random page on facebook it wasn't even like nobody that would know this girl so they wouldn't like be talking about the same person or anything like that and i was like that's that's it but i there were so many people that i had met throughout that point and i know that like I don't know if I want to like, yeah, it's fine. So I know back in like before I started going to therapy and but whenever I was still dealing with a lot of toxic traits that I was trying to grow out of and everything, I, um, there were different points where I definitely like, I wouldn't say that it was narcissism, but I did have a tendency to like make things about me or to only see things from my perspective, but I still saw myself as a very empathetic person. And so obviously those two things, you know, like, would contradict one another and i you know went to therapy and learned what toxic things i was doing and so it just like blows my mind because for me personally i know whenever i was like going through that if i reacted really rashly or really like toxically to something later on i'd feel bad you know what i'm saying like i would then start to feel bad for the person especially if i had a conversation about it with them and then i saw how badly it affected them i would feel genuinely bad for it and right. so then I would put myself in their shoes and I would like kind of go through embarrassment and things like that, that I acted that way. So my question is like, for those people that it's not like that, maybe do you think that they like just got solidified that way or something? Like, what is it that caused I mean, that? <laughs> fully. Well, and then this is the question that kept going through my head. Cause like, I've been the sensitive one, like my whole life, whatever. Um, And what I find that the question I always ask is, 
you know, because we all have our own different levels of what we think empathy is in our lives and how it shows through. But is it also a toxic trait towards yourself? Oh, I, yes, I a thousand percent think, yes, it can be toxic towards yourself. Sorry, oh, I did not mean to agree no, so hard are, to that, but yes. No, but <laughs> yes, it, but exactly, that's how I feel about it, because I know for me, I would, like, let my empathy get the best of me, and I think that's why, just in general, I've, like, kind of let people, like, walk all over me, and that's, like, a very you know, vulnerable thing for me to say. So everyone, mm -hmm. please excuse me. And I'm sure other people feel the same. Like, like if I hurt someone's feelings, like I'm like, I'm usually the first one to be like, look, like, I'm really sorry. Like, I really realized that what I said was like messed up, blah, blah, blah. Because I feel like I feel their pain. Like I physically feel their pain. And even if I'm in the right, and I'm a Virgo, so you know I'm always right. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. No, just just kidding. <laughs> Maybe it is me. Maybe I'm the problem. Yeah. Um, it's me. Hi. It's me. Hi. I'm, I'm problem. the problem. It's me. It's me. I feel like we have referenced Taylor so much this season already, and I'm I'm loving it because I'm a big Swifty. I don't know if people knew that about me, or but yeah, freaking love Taylor Swift, and I feel like we are just like. You can defend me her. right now, actually, because I'm about to break your heart that I'm not. That's okay. Boom. No, that's okay. That's okay. No, that's fine. I'm not one of those Swifty that's like, you have to like Taylor Swift. As long as you don't judge me and get in the way of me loving Taylor Swift, you don't have to like her. Let know? me let me tell you something related to empathy here with Taylor Swift, Miss Okay. Ma when I heard that my friends got fake tickets, they didn't know until they got um. there to the Kansas City show. Excuse me, one moment. And then spent more thousands of dollars to get real tickets. I felt the pain of spending over five thousand dollars on these tickets. Yeah, and no. let me tell you, that's messed up. My heart was crying for them because I don't have five thousand dollars. Yeah, no. I mean, do you have five thousand dollars to spare, Samuel? Because oh, no. I surely do not. I, you will not see me going. I love Taylor Swift, but you will not see me going to a Taylor Swift concert anytime soon because um, for that reason exactly. Now it's I know so I have a lot sad. of people. Ugh. Yeah, no, I'm part of a, a little Instagram group called Swifties Assemble. That, that would I'm, be you. That yeah. would be you. Um, that I started with just me and like two friends and now it has grown into me and a gaggle of girls and I freaking love it. Um, but a lot of them did go to uh, the uh, Taylor Swift, like to the different like Taylor Swift concerts and everything that have been here recently. And some of them told me they were like, no, I was able to get con like concert tickets like, you know, way back, like in like the hundreds. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm a big like Noah Cahan fan. And I don't even know if I'm saying his last name right, but I love him, right? Tell and when you. I was in Charlotte last year, I found out that he was going to be in, um, he was going to be there doing a concert, right? And so I looked because I got access to the pre sale 20 bucks, 20 bucks for the pre sale tickets to like get kind of close to him and see him and everything. And he's not like a not popular singer, you know what I'm saying? But, anyways, right. so well, I mean, I mean, bait. Based on that, I got pre-sale to Beyonce fifty dollars tickets. Now, mind you, oh my god, mind you, they are the nosebleeds, but I'm yeah. not paying an arm and a leg for a thousand something to go sit on the floor. I'm not yeah, doing no. it. Mm -hmm. So I paid fifty, fifty, fifty point fifty. That's how much it was. Obviously, it was about like seventy something with tax and like processing and all that. But I mean, you get to see Beyonce, so. That will be my second time. So, like, Ugh. find me on my Instagram. Look at my fit. I'm still trying to figure out what to wear. Please give me ideas. Thank you. Yes. Anywho. Any Anyways, work. As, uh, empathy. As, yeah, yeah. Empathy. But, yeah, no. Um, Speaking of empathy, like, that's exactly a good, uh, like, I'm a huge Swifty, but I recognize that she's not everyone's cup of tea. I've met people that are like, I love her music. I hear her personality. I'm like, good for you. Like, you know, at Honestly, least you're not someone who just fair. blind. Yeah. And I'm like, good for you. At least you're someone who isn't just a follower. You know, like, um, because I know some Swifties that will like defend her to the day she dies. I'm like, nah, she's made some questionable decisions. I just think she's a bad bitch. You know what I'm saying? She's a baddie. She's out here doing the damn thing. You know what I'm saying? And people are so judgmental toward her because she's a woman, you know? But that's my opinion. And part of empathy is understanding that other people have other opinions. And if it's, it's not hurting opinion. you, 
Yes. And I say all the time, this is like one of my biggest things to, that I literally say almost every single day in my life. It costs zero dollars to mind your business. And I think that's another part of empathy. Oh, you know, that's like fair. learning boundaries as um, what was that? Was that episode two that we recorded? Yeah. Good baby. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, just understanding boundaries, like just giving boundaries between people and that are around people and um, not trying to step over those boundaries whenever it's not your business, you know, facts. And I, to b- branch off what you were saying about being an empath and it getting you like, you know, it being bad for you too. That was something that at the very beginning when you were saying like, if you get stuck in the middle of things a lot, you're probably an empath. If you are like the one that I can't remember what all you said, cause you were like this. And I was like, that was me. That was me yeah. until I learned if to not be the that, one you know? that. It was, if you're the one that your family or your friends say that you're like the most sensitive friend yeah. or the most like dramatic friend in the sense of emotions it's you're an empath (laughs) exactly and that's me i've always been called sensitive my whole life and i finally learned like not to take that as an insult but um actually going off that real quick Mm -hmm. literally i found this quote that i thought was so good about people being sensitive and it just it changed my entire perspective on people calling me sensitive because it's actually a fact that if you are more sensitive, you are more empathetic, whatever the case may be, you are actually more likely to be successful in your life because you can read people better. And that's why like you're going to be able to balance more issues. And I said, yeah. and ain't that the truth? Yeah. Say it with your chest. Exactly. Same. And you know, that's something that I used to always like, I mean, I still, I mean, I say that I'm sensitive. So no one has the chance to like, say it over me, you know, <laughs> like I am sensitive. Um, I don't allow my sensitivity to affect other people negatively. And I did do that sure. once upon a time. But I, um, yeah, I remember one time, one of my siblings, it, it, like literally, I think this was like during 2020. Um, we got into a tiff and she was like, you are too sensitive. And I was like, that's not a bad thing. Also like pot calling the kettle black because we are all emotional as hell in my family. Right. I just accept it. <laughs> my emotions well, look a little different than yours. And I, and this is, this is what I've always said about my family, you know, being from like a whole nother culture, like really don't share emotions. And I was always the only one that would really like sob and cry. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's why everyone like um, automatically assumes like oh you're just sensitive and like you got puppy eye teardrops like you know whatever i mean but it's it was i mean we're not told to show emotion and then i like tried to not show emotion and then people were like no it's okay show your emotions and then i was just like falling waterfalls out of my eyes and it was um interesting yeah mine's because i'm a dude and i'm emotional so people always say i'm too sensitive because um in southern culture you're not supposed to cry or show emotion if you're a man so oh it that's that's arab culture too uh like we have i mean my you know no dig on my family i love my family but i mean it's harder for my brothers to show emotion than it is for me because I'm a woman, it's more acceptable to be like dainty and like, mm. mm-hmm. yeah, no, I'm the complete opposite of that. I don't know what made my parents think that I was going to turn out that way. But uh, no, they you're definitely. Like, you're the only girl, too, aren't you? Yeah. Having to anyway. deal with all those dudes. dudes. I know. Never mind. I don't know if I want to say that. I was about to get into a conversation you and I have had before about one of your. Uh, brothers and i was like hold up let me reel that in let me let me not like <laughs> that, right that when out. you said that right when you said that i just heard taylor swift go i did something bad yeah i know i was literally i'll cut it out i'll make sure i make notes to cut it out but um i was literally gonna be like the one brother that like got mad over that i was like he's more way more sensitive than what you are so like <laughs> Yeah, don't have to but, say it to me. Say it yeah. with your chest, brother. I, no, I don't think... keep it in the episode. Keep it I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, but like literally like people, I think, especially just in the sense of psychology, you know, we do talk a lot about this in, um, oh my God, social psych. We talk a lot about this in social psych is where men, because of the standards that society sets, 
we don't allow men to be sensitive. We don't allow yeah. men to have weakness. Now, with that being said, men show weakness in other ways because mm -hmm. they are not able to show it in the proper way that women are um, and that every human should have the right to cry. Every human should have the right to say their feelings. But then when it comes out as gaslighting mm -hmm. or um, screaming or punching or use Being your imagination yeah. yeah use your imagination with how bad that can get mm -hmm. we are reinforcing those norms yeah which is kind of I mean, don't get me wrong like a, an abuser and his abuser but it's definitely systemic like it's definitely a systemic thing and if you look back at cultures like ancient cultures and stuff like that we're still learning things about like we just made discoveries that uh disproved the hunter gatherer theory where it was like the um men were the main hunter hunters and the women were the main gatherers that stayed at home with the family we right. actually just found evidence that there are tribes i want to say it was like here indigenous tribes here that did not follow that same like setup and that we're finding more evidence all around the world that suggests that that was completely made up during the age of like colonization and so i think that th that is where like true toxic masculinity starts to come into play you know is that it's systemic and i mean like i said an abuser is an abuser you know like hands down it's that simple but there's a lot of systemic like influence to it you know yeah and i think that's why and don't and no one get offended when i say this but this is why we don't have a lot of men that are showing their true traits of empathy and it's sad it's really sad um because like why can i sit there and cry in front of like seven people but like you can't cry in front of your wife your kids your mom your dad your brother your whomever it doesn't yeah. make sense it makes me think about this one time uh very recently there was this guy that i used to kind of like be friends with that's from that I, I met him in high school and we like reconnected for a little while after high school and I was hanging out with him a little while back and he was like wanting to get into movies and things like that and he kept saying because he had this idea for a script but it was like I won't even get too far into it because it's like there's so many things and I'm like why are you trying mm -hmm. to force that into it but he was just like really weird like QAnon conservative and Christian and he was trying to like force these things into like an action movie and I was like what but um he said he kept saying i want it to be so emotional it makes a grown man cry and i was like why is that your mm. why is that your measurement why is that like what you know like and so then i started talking about like how he could create like a strong female character and things like that and he's like whoa yeah i could do this i that that would make that like she would be the strongest like female role ever and i was like do you only watch movies where like men are the main characters because this is like half the shit that like i've seen strong female characters do you know and it was just like really weird because it just shows like it's a cycle of systemic like implementation of gender roles then people are pulled toward the implementation of gender roles through media and the things they consume and then it just continues being a cycle that way where it's then taught and pushed on to children when they're young and things like that so but i mean in the end of the day i mean even even when you're watching a movie or something like an empath can feel that character's feeling oh yeah and i'm sure and you know like i'm one of those people i hate crying during a movie i don't want to show emotion but then i show emotion because i cry during the movie and i just do one tear and then i'm done because i'm like you don't get to cry i call that um a movie scene cry where you just like cry one tear and you're just like and it's like no ugly face or anything and you're still like somehow really pretty at the end of it and there's like no makeup smeared or anything that's called a movie scene cry that's what i call it at least not that's me amazing. I, Ugh, I call, I I, that. i'm i'm like an ugly crier i'm like you know like scream crying yeah if i am sobbing i feel like i'm the ugliest human on the planet and like i know i'm not <laughs> but in that moment i'm like everybody's licking not licking me yeah you know who like was a big like when I think about like convincing cries in movies and things like that, hear me out. Hear me out. Jennifer Lawrence, specifically in the Hunger Games, her cries, like she's a very pretty person. Like she's very pretty. You know what I'm saying? But her cries are so realistic to me because she like doesn't care about making an ugly ass face. You know what I'm saying? Like, because there were certain parts where she had to be like heartbroken and like distraught. 
and she like hit it because she was she was hitting the like you know what i'm saying like scream cry you know like spit yeah. going everywhere like anyways yeah actually i just before they got rid of that on uh oh my god what platform was it Netflix? They had, yeah they had all of them and i watched every single one and i'll tell you the first movie not convinced for me uh just i mean it was <sighs> good it was it was good for the sake of when it came out and like yeah the technology all that great but like I didn't understand emotion until the end of the second yeah. movie. Oh well, that's because well, if you think about it, empathy. I don't know. This kind of goes in line with empathy. In the um, first movie, she was having to pretend the whole time, so like none of it was real to her. Like she like that's what the second movie was, or second book too, was her like dissecting what she really felt and what she didn't feel. You know, mm -hmm. and like that's whenever she became like became aware that her feelings for Peta were real. You know, because in the first book and first movie, it was all about survival. Like she was just pretending. You know, so. And that's on. Empathy. Empathy. Right. But yeah. So back to the discussion of empathy. Yeah. So the natural ability to just like put yourself in someone else's shoes to feel for someone else, even if it's something that does not affect you at all. And that's something, like I said, I have very, very. um naturally and there were there was even a situation here recently where i was dealing with someone who i hardcore disagreed with and did not appreciate nor agree with the things that they were doing because i felt like they were very in inhumane but i just kept saying like i feel like i'm being tested here goes the spiritual side um being tested by the universe to show empathy for this person like to even show empathy for someone who does this and to be able to discern like is it someone just being malicious or is there something genuinely there and so when i started opening up to empathy and started having those open conversations i learned a lot more about that person and the decisions they were making that helped me kind of understand where they were coming from and then also help me understand like how to approach them and now we're like shifting to a better way of doing things so it's like Empathy can be a really great tool for um, conflict resolution, right? So if I, like Gabby, say that I don't like how you did something, if I came at you and was like, you did blah, 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 and went the Yeah, I'll off fight on you. you right now. Yeah, exactly. But if I came to you and was like, <laughs> hey, Gabby, like, can we talk for a second? When you did this, this, and this, it made me feel this way. And I understand that may have not been your point, you know, your, like what you were like intending. Can you explain to me how you were feeling and where you were coming from? You're going to be a lot more likely to be respectful toward me. Correct. A hundred percent. Yeah, and it's because I'm opening up to empathy. I'm opening up to hear your perspective and hear what you have to say and how you're feeling. And But I'm leading also with how I'm feeling. I'm not saying you did something. I'm just saying I feel this way in, res in response to what the situation was or when you did a specific thing, not accusing you, like just stating something that you did. Like when you said a certain thing or something like that, I felt this way. And I'd like to know how you felt about it. You know what I'm saying? And so like leading with empathy can be a great tool. But just like what we were saying earlier – like leading with empathy can be very toxic too because like gabby said it can put you in the middle of certain situations that you should not be in the middle of it can also put you in the middle of situations where you're going to be ran over or you're going to be taken advantage of and i can say and i actually found this out through therapy fun so here we go this is like toxic empathy 101 um so uh i would allow people to run all over me and everything and then i would end up exploding right or because i was allowing people to run all over me over and over and over again i became so accustomed to their emotions in that situation my first response was to be manipulative and that's the mm. easiest place to be manipulative is from a place of empathy if you're if someone is confiding every emotion in you or you're constantly like hearing what they're feeling and what they're saying and what they're thinking and everything and you're remembering that because you're an empath you're logging all of that and so you're showing this person respect and like taking in all their feelings and everything but when that's not returned by them your first instinct is to go okay well i know how you feel about this so i'm about to turn it against you and and you know yeah. i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie i definitely had thoughts like that like i uh that's like so awful especially in like grade school middle school when i really didn't have a lot of friends i mean i obviously like made some later but i didn't have a lot of friends and everyone for some reason in my class would come and tell me everything so i knew who liked who who said what about where both sides of every coin i knew and so i always would be like 
but I would never say it to their face. But like when I'd be alone in my room, I said, hmm, you just don't know what I know about you. I could destroy you in the blink of an eye because that I was is. a what? A B I T C H. H. Yeah, but this is where you spelled it right. Like <laughs> for once. <laughs> but no, like I because I would be sitting in my head. And at that point, I had a lot of loneliness going on as well, which was something I eventually tackled. And the same thing with kind of like the manipulative manipulative side anyway but it's you know something i eventually dealt with but like i would have never done anything about it is the thing like i would think that way because i i don't know why i always felt like i had this like bad bitch persona in the background but uh -huh. like especially in middle school grade school it like never would come out because i was so scared that you know, people would run over me, which they were do doing anyway. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think it's funny that we were just having this like conversation earlier. Where I was like, you're supposed to be in your bad bitch era. And you're like, I have this bad bitch persona, but she like never comes out. And I'm like, no shit. Okay. Any listen, <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, and this is where my empathy comes in. And this is where I get myself into trouble or I get in the middle of shit I'm not supposed to is because like I don't in the end of the day I learned that I hate hurting people's feelings I hate it I hate hurting people's feelings. I will bluntly say something to you and I'll say well that's not what happened here's what happened and I'll give you the facts but like the moment I know I hurt someone's feelings I'm fucking I'm like I can't do it for example uh there was my best friend literally we live together and there was something that ha that I was like, ooh, can this boy come over? And I knew she felt uncomfortable. Like I could read it on her face. When I tell you that gave me the most anxiety I've ever felt in 50 years. I mean, I- 50 years? <laughs> I'm 25, 50 years. <laughs> Anyways, I'm like, I literally, like it crumbled me. It destroyed me and made me cry. It made because my em empathy stepped into the and was like oh my god she's so uncomfortable it's like on her like on her face blah 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 and i said no nope, he's not coming over done period and she was like gabby i don't care and i'm like yes you do you're lying to me and like yes you do you do care blah blah blah, blah. and she was like gabby no seriously it's like fine but did that boy come over no because i scared myself because yeah. what empathy and i don't like doing what hurting people's feelings and so that's the problem yeah, but see, there's two things that it's, that's there, right? First thing I want to say is that, like, one, that's another thing where it comes to, like, well, actually, both of these align with boundaries, right? And right. so um, living with other people, you know, the reason why you probably not, like, I don't, I mean, I've met your best friend and your roommate several times, but I don't know, know her, you know what I'm saying? But just if I had to guess what happened was she was like initially uncomfortable with it, but then rationalized and was like, well, no, it's Gabby's house too. And like, if she wants to have that's this dude exactly over, it. it's really not that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? And that's a healthy way to, you know what I'm saying? To rationalize. Like I do that all the time where I'm like, oh, and then I think about it. I'm like, well, hold on. Like, think about you know no, think it out. I, well and she was going to work that night so it's not like yeah <laughs> it's not like anything was like a big red flag but like mm -hmm. i fully was like just because i know her and i respect her so much i didn't like and i still and she can tell you this because it is my like personal red flag but i literally hurt I, if i can if i consciously hurt her feelings i will literally be so anxious and like not know what to do with myself like it's ridiculous um but that's because she's my bud yeah it makes <laughs> sense but yeah and then um oh i lost it the other thing about boundaries that i was going to say with uh empathy oh yeah i was like yeah or yeah so allowing like other people to set their own boundaries and then you also setting your own boundaries not you spiraling unless it's inside of a boundary any whore <laughs> That was a lot of the word boundary in the same sentence. Yeah, that was the spiral. There it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's always there. It's always there. But um anyway, so yeah. Um setting your own boundaries like you can have empathy for someone and still you know what I'm saying? Not given to them. Like I'm a very empathetic person. I have empathy for people a lot of times, but sometimes I mean like I'm a very like 
consistent person when it comes to the decision decisions I make too. You can ask Gabby, you can ask all my friends, you can ask everybody in my family. If I say I don't like something and it's not going to happen, that means I don't like it and it's, it's not, not going to happen. happen. Yeah, right. unless you come to me respectfully and you're like, hey, like I understand how you feel and I understand that like you, you know, if you come to me with empathy and understanding, then maybe we can negotiate, right? But there are some points where it's like you let people do things enough. And you can have empathy for them. You can understand. You can like say like, oh, I get why they keep doing this. But eventually enough is enough. And you're allowed to say, I understand and I hear you and I understand this position you're in, but I'm not changing my position. Sorry. You know? And that's what I hate. I hate doing that. But it's, it's healthy. Done. It's healthy. No, well, like I think of like things I've been in recently, Um, you know, I literally like feel things and I'm like, look, like I totally get what you're saying. I'm speaking your language. I like, I I'm right here. I'm right here, brother. You know? Um, but like you did a, B, C, D, E and that mm -hmm. messed with my feelings. And there's like three things that piss me off. You waste my money, you waste my time and you fuck with my feelings. And if you do yeah. that, it's game over. Exactly period on god yes i'm a big person about like someone wasting my time too that's a whoo that's a big one for me literally cannot stand the, it. those first two literally you can mess with my feelings and i'll still be okay but like if you mess with my money and you mess with my time especially if it is counterintuitive with money mm -hmm. i'll fight you i mm -hmm. will throw hands literally you could tell me I'm empathy ugly. who is she she left. <laughs> you could literally tell me I'm ugly and I'd be like, thank you so much. Wow. It would just like, I don't care. Like, but the fact that you wasted my money or my time or both, I'm about to pull up some sleeves and take out my earrings. Who's empathy? I ain't got it. <laughs> something else. It's something else. I swear, no, like those are so so yeah, I'm and I'm still empathetic in those situations, but like especially those two just full downgrade like i i'll fight you i don't care yeah anyways I think and that's on <laughs> period that's on empathy and boundaries Clap. vulnerability my favorite <laughs> anyways um so yeah i think that's a good place to i guess wrap up this conversation gabby do you have anything that you want to add at the end about empathy live laugh love use your boundaries <laughs> yeah i think empathy is something that we could talk about all day long uh just to like summarize empathy is a good thing to have i think some people are born with it i think some people learn it but i think that it's, it could be maybelline it could be maybelline um not sponsored but i mean we could be not i guess sponsor. not sponsored <laughs> anyways but um you know or i think that everyone is born with the capability of it of course there are like exceptions where like some people have you know real mental health disorders where they may not be able to sociopaths part yeah partake in empathy correct but um for the most part i feel like people are born with the capability of having empathy you should learn it you should use it as a positive tool do not use it as a negative or toxic tool if you have to hurt someone's feelings to get yourself out of a bad situation do it I know it sucks and I know you have empathy and you're going to want to see it from their perspective, but you got to look out for you first because only you can. Especially if it's a dangerous situation. Don't, don't enter those. Exactly. Uh -uh. Don't do it. Don't do that. it. Don't yeah. do it. Well, yeah. uh, anyway, so this was another episode of Enhance and thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Enhanced Podcast. I am Sam, one of your hosts. And I'm your other host, Gabby Sabai. If you want to find me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at, at Sam if you do. You can find me on TikTok at Gabby S80 and on Instagram at G S A B A T97. And if you want to follow the podcast, you can find us on Instagram and on Facebook at enhanced.productions.publishing. And check us out on our website at enhanced.productions. Enhance your peace, your joy, and your existence.